I'm Dan Brennan. I'm Joseph Brennan, and we're the founders of Zoba. I was a Marine officer uh, before I came to Harvard, and in that capacity, I was working in, in Baghdad with the Diplomatic Security Service, and what the Diplomatic Security Service does is it protects um, diplomats as they move around inside cities and kind of do their work. Um, and I was working in Baghdad, um, and I was working with a lot of data that had to do with car bombs and that those type of incidents, and I was frustrated because there didn't seem to be any ability to make predictions um, about future events or about uh, areas that were at high threat for future events and I thought that was a bit ridiculous you know with you know machine learning and all the technology that there was out there So the Dialog has been huge for us. Um, I kind of, when I think about Zoba, I, I tend to divide it into kind of the pre-iLab times and the post-iLab times and the pre-iLab times. They were, were They were much darker times. They were dark. Um, and, and I think I think that that goes in kind of two parts. So you have the resource factor, um, and, and for us, the biggest one has probably been our mentor that we've gotten through the program here. He's been absolutely incredible uh, for helping us on our journey. You also have just the community aspect, which is really nice given that entrepreneurship can be really, really isolating. Um, and so for a lot of months, it was basically just the two of us looking at each other every day with the same problems. Um, and when we would hit the same roadblocks, it would, it would be really frustrating. And here at the iLab, you have a community of people that are all kind of working through the same issues, um, which makes you feel a bit less crazy when it gets tough. The basic problem we're trying to solve is to make predictions in places that don't keep any historical crime data um, and really where, where there's not a lot of data present. So what we do is we go to cities with good reputations for you know, data openness and even policing and we take uh, criminal and terror events, we match them with just thousands of different variables in the environment. So you know, population density, what businesses are around, what the street lighting's like, what the weather was like, what day of the week it was, what time it was, and we take all these variables we run them through machine learning algorithms to, to find out which ones had the most effect on the, those criminal incidences. And then we build models that we can apply to cities that don't have data. And, and it's funny, when we started, I think that the focus is more on making sense of existing data. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as time went on and we were kind of working through these data sets, we are realizing um, you know, they're either inaccessible or inaccurate in some way, so heavily biased um, or in, in, in some other way problematic in a lot of cities. Uh, and so that would kind of led down this road of trying to find alternate ways, proxies, to answer the same problems we were trying to answer with that data that was either inaccessible or biased. So on a more philosophical level, when we started Zoba, we really were motivated by this idea of cutting through uh, fear. I think uncertainty about you know risk really drives fear. You know, if you don't know anything about a place, you're going to be afraid of it. And, and you know, if you're an individual traveler, that might prevent you from going somewhere and, and experiencing a new place. Or if you're a business, it might prevent you from realizing gain or expanding to other markets that could benefit from your products. There's a lot of hype on the media. There is um, kind of blanket statements put out about the risk in different places and you know being travelers ourselves and, and spending a lot of time out of the country we thought that a lot of that was very distant from the ground truth <laughs> 